So in the last video, we looked at um, we looked at vaccinations and the work of Edward Jenner. In this video, we're going to look at germ theory and the work of Louis Pasteur. Okay, we're going to look at the sort of links between germs and diseases. Okay, and the sort of theories that they had at the time. And then we're going to look at Louis's work and his ideas and the impact it had on uh, the sort of development of modern medicine. Okay. So first off, let's have a look at the link between germs and disease. So microorganisms were discovered as early as the 17th century, so the 1600s. However, many didn't make the connection between germs and disease. So really, the, so the idea that... Oh, I'm going to do some more lines again. That's not very good. So germs were effectively discovered. Germs were effectively discovered effectively discovered but there is a big but but people people didn't think it was to do with disease okay didn't think it had a link okay had a link to disease to illness, we'll just put, okay, did not have a link to illness, okay, scientists believe that these microbes were created by decaying matter, e.g. rotting food, and, I mean, this is technically incorrect, however, is not far off, okay, what the actual uh, explanation is, and this idea of, of creation of these organisms being created by just rotting food or decaying matter is known as spontaneous generation, okay. Now, this was the theory of spontaneous res generation that existed from as early as the 17th century. Okay. Louis Pasteur, however, was a chemist from France, and in 1857 he was employed to find the explanation for the soaring of sugar beet used in fermenting alcohol. Okay, the souring of sugar beet. So, what Pasteur really did was he proved that. He proved that germs did exist in the air. Okay. He also produced proved that sterilized water in a closed flask will stay sterile compared to open flasks. So this is how he proved that it was in the air. So it would stay sterile. It would it would stay sterile. Sterile if it was if it was closed okay so really when you open it what changes well the air gets in air gets in so he proved that germs are uh, were in the air and they traveled through the air okay and in 1861 he published his germ theory okay and he argued that microbes in the air cause the decay so rather than it being rather than it being the decay causing microbes in the air he proved that it was the microbes in the air that caused the decay so really what they got wrong with the spontaneous generation theory was that they just got it the wrong way around they thought that decaying matter it decayed and that created some um, these microbes these germs he proved that it was the germs that created the decay okay so he argued that microbes in the air caused decay. And a few years later, six years later, Pasteur published evidence proving that there was a link between germs and disease. Okay, So really, not only did Pasteur um, sort of uh, debunk the theory of spontaneous generation and get the correct answer, he also proved that the link was there between germs and disease. So it was really hugely influential. And it had a huge impact on the theory of medicine. Okay, so obviously, just like with all of these theories at the start, there was skepticism. Okay, there's always skepticism. There's always skepticism when it comes uh, to revolutionary ideas, because this was a revolutionary idea with uh, revolutionary revolutionary ideas 
And the reason why it was revolutionary is because the idea of spontaneous generation existed for years and years and years. It was almost the, the, the general practice, okay? It was the standard idea. And Louis Pasteur just debunked it completely, okay? And he made the link between disease and germs, okay? For some, it was too much to believe that these little microbes caused disease. But the thing is, when it comes to these theories that are obviously correct, the evidence can't be ignored, okay? And despite the fact that there was initial criticism uh, in the in the UK and Britain at the time, people slowly came around to the to the idea that germ theory was correct. Okay, and as a result, it did gain popularity in Britain. So the doctor and scientist Joseph Lister developed antiseptics using germ theory, and it also confirmed John Snow's findings about cholera. Okay, so we see that germ theory did make a lot of uh, had quite a big impact on the medical community and as a result there was sort of a sort of a race to identify microbes to identify them and identify what they link what diseases they link to okay so the german scientist uh, robert koch uh, built upon the work of pasteur okay he did this by linking specific diseases to particular microbes, which was very interesting. So he developed uh, a technique known as microbe hunting. So uh, uh, almost a micro hunting revolution began in, in, in Europe at the time. So Koch identified anthrax in 1876. And he also uh, identified the bacteria which caused, which caused septicemia in 1878 tuberculosis in 1882 and a year later cholera in 1883 okay so the method he used involved just breeding lots of bacteria and using dyes to stain the bacteria and photograph them to record the findings okay so Pasteur really brought about a new revolution in modern medicine okay not only did he it was able to explain explain different different diseases and how they are caused it also helped people to identify the causes and stop um, the diseases spreading as well as with things like antiseptics it also created an, a revolution almost in microbe hunting that was developed by robert koch okay so that's really what the the work of pastor really did okay he dis disproved sort of existing theories about about medicine and about germ theory and he developed his own and it really did have a huge impact on medicine as a, even up to today.